hello. My name is Mary Ellen Wilson. If this is your first coffee chat with us, welcome. We are delighted that you are here. I am your business development manager with Visiting Angels. And we have offices in Gaithersburg, Silver Spring, Edgewater, Maryland, and Washington, D.C. We allow, we help and allow older adults to age in place at home very safely. We have been doing these coffee chats now since, uh, since COVID began. We're used to going out into the community and doing lunch and learns and little seminars and meeting you in your homes. So with COVID, we've really missed that. So now we are bringing our uh, coffee chats to you via our Zoom platform. And it has really been wonderful, wonderful. So we have been focusing on dementia. This is part three of our series. And before I get to that, let me just give you a, a little bit of uh, housekeeping. So we are going to be chatting about our topic today for about 30 minutes. And at that point, we will allow you to ask any questions that you want. But as you are thinking of questions, go ahead and just jot them down in the chat box. I just want to make sure there wasn't anything in there yet. Go ahead and write them in the chat box. We will get to it after the presentation. Also, uh, don't worry about, you know, if you miss something and you're frantically trying to take notes, sit back, relax, take it all in. We will send you a recording uh, later on today or first thing tomorrow. So you will have a recorded version of the uh, webinar as well. Alrighty, so today is part three in our series, uh, Living Well with Dementia. Today we're going to be talking again with our wonderful guest, Dana Wendeljewski with Fox Rehab. Hello, Dana. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So we are super excited to have you. We're going today be talking about activities that you can do with a loved one suffering from dementia. Our whole focus on this series was to improve the day to day life of those diagnosed with dementia, Alzheimer's or, or other cognitive issues. Um, because it doesn't have to be a death sentence. So Dana, I would love for you to jump in, introduce yourself, maybe recap in a few sentences or less uh, our last two webinars, and then we'll get started. Great. Thank you so much. I'm excited to present with you the third part of our series this morning. So my name is Dana Wintelgewski. I am an occupational therapist, uh, and right now um, I'm my focus is on our patients that do have dementia or cognitive decline. And so I'm excited to share more with you. I have been an occupational therapist for over 11 years now with seven of those being at Fox Rehabilitation. So we provide outpatient therapy services in the homes of older adults. That could be assisted living, that could be um, independent homes as well as independent living. So really helping our older adults to thrive. Um, what we've talked about so far, part one in the series was really about communication, how to best communicate with our loved ones so that they have an understanding and we also have realistic expectations um, and that engagement is successful. Then the last time we spoke about um, promoting positive behaviors, and that was really looking at how to set up the environment, how to um, interact and communicate or engage in activities to promote those positive behaviors. And today we're going to go more into those activities and how to personalize them um, for each stage of dementia. Awesome. And I also wanted to say, if you missed out on either one of the first two sessions, no worries. Let me know. You can pop me a note in the chat box or Q&A. Just let me know and I'll send you the recorded version. Or you can always go to our website 
uh, because we do have the links on that as well. And just something that Dana said that resonated with me so much because it really is our mission at Visiting Angels as well, is that your whole mission is to help people thrive helping them thrive, live their best life. And I, I just love that. So yay, let's jump in and talk about activities. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen. Put it in presentation mode here. There we go, can you see that? Yes, we can. All right, excellent. All right, so to lead us off, uh, let's look at key beliefs and principles. Now, this was taken directly from Tifa Snow. If you have not heard of her, you may want to Google search or even look on YouTube. She does have amazing videos where she walks you through examples and she's just very down to earth and puts it in a perspective that we can all understand. Um, and some of those key beliefs that she speaks about is that all people need to be needed. And we've talked about this in the way we communicate, in promoting positive behaviors, we all need to be needed. Nurturing is a critical part of a life worth living. And as caregivers, we tend to take that ability to nurture away. We promote that our older adults, our loved ones, they want to be entertained. We take away their roles and responsibilities. Meanwhile, our loved one also has dementia, which takes this away as well. It really strips away who we are. So this idea of providing a role, an activity for our loved ones, as well as providing just the right challenge for the degree of engagement is important. And we're gonna get into that a little bit more. Um, there is a video by Tifa Snow that talks about our loved ones with dementia being on a cruise ship. And if you can imagine being on a cruise, you're very excited when you first arrived. You're kind of in awe, things are done for you, meals are prepared and served to you with a smile. You know, you're enjoying every little component of that cruise. But after a while, you're ready to get off the cruise you're ready to go home and get things done that you need to. So could you imagine being that older adult that cannot get off the cruise? Everything is done for you forever. And you can imagine how that does kind of take some of that, that meaning away from your life. You know, there's things that I need to do that I need to get done. Um, and so just kind of keep that in mind as we're talking today. So the importance of activities. Engaging in a successful activity delays further cognitive decline. It reduces negative behaviors, promotes positive behaviors. When someone is engaging in an activity, we're improving and utilizing our communication. We're also promoting socialization skills. We tend to do activities with other people that we enjoy being around and naturally it's going to open ourselves up to communication. Um, completing a necessary task. There's this feeling of, of purposeful engagement and I did this today. While you're also up and moving around and engaging, you're improving your overall health, the health of your heart, your lungs, your muscles. It only, I'm gonna throw a little fact out there. It only takes 72 hours of bed rest to start losing muscle mass. Wow. If we are in bed for one week, it takes three months of physical activity to gain that back. So wow. engaging and staying active as we're an older adult is so important. So even a cold, you know, all of these things going on in the world around us that might have us in bed or sedentary for longer really wreak havoc on the older adult's body. And so the importance of activity is certainly there. It stimulates our thinking and it ultimately improves quality of life. So we're going to look at activities and kind of brainstorm, give some ideas as we go through the stages of dementia. And we covered the stages of dementia in the first series that we did in the first part, um, but we'll take a look at them a little bit more now. So stage three is when your loved one really starts to um, break down their compensatory strategies. 
maybe lists and calendars aren't working quite so much. You're noticing that they're having a harder time recalling information. Um, and so this person still enjoys all of the things that they used to do. They might just need encouragement or reminders to attend and remember that those activities are coming up. So continue to use the calendar, continue to maybe put a sticky where they, where they look. Um, maybe it's on their fridge, maybe it's an, it's an appointment book that they keep in their purse or their back pocket, but they might also start to need a phone call from you to remind them that those events are coming up. They will be socially appropriate off-site for the outing, but they might get a little overwhelmed and confused if they actually have to pay for anything. So you might need to be ready to jump in and assist with any money management. Now they may do better with lunch outings than shopping outings. So if you think, you know, with the world of COVID, we are not going out and shopping quite so much, but if you are going out, you might notice that your loved one gets a little overwhelmed with too many stops or in an area that's new to them. So you might want to start to take them to a familiar restaurant or a familiar store. Um, so it's not quite such an overwhelming experience. And they will be able to learn in this activity a new, or I'm sorry, in this stage, a new activity, something simple um, with not too many steps. You might find that engaging them in an activity, you know, they, they might need to be a little bit more um, in a seated position. And so something like adult coloring books is nice. I know I have one myself. Um, they might want to do some painting, even if it's a simple, a simple craft that they can intuitively catch on to. This stage does really like board games. If board games was in your family, continue to play those. Maybe if a grandchild comes, get out that board game and engage. Uh, Wii games are also very popular. They create a lot of environment for physical movement, which we love. It stimulates your mind and your body. And then card games as well within small groups. And this, um, this stage really does enjoy group exercise. I don't know about you, but I need a cheerleader in the background pushing me to exercise. Yeah. And so myself, I love the exercise groups um, or there might even be videos on TV or you know your Hulu or YouTube or who knows what you might have a DVD that you could put on. And at this stage, they're going to um, enjoy something like that. It really seems like right now, especially with our pandemic, that YouTube is full of exercise videos. I'm sure if you did a quick Google search, you're going to find tons of group exercises that you can do uh, right from YouTube. But I wanted to ask about the board games. That's interesting to me. So with board games, are we talking about... Um, children's level games, the Candyland, or are we talking more checkers, chess, and katana? You know, I think it could really be whatever this person enjoyed. You know, I personally wouldn't pull out Candyland, but if my daughter is there, I enjoy it because she enjoys it. So you might need to also gear the type of activity with the company and who your loved one is interacting with. You know, they will they will have that same reaction. If they're playing with a child, they'll understand that they're playing a child's game and it's more for that interaction and enjoyment of the little one rather than your loved one. Um, but maybe if it's two adults, absolutely. Don't be afraid to pull out that chess game that maybe they've always know, knew how to play um, or checkers or connect four is a really good simple one. Even if they haven't played connect four, probably could still figure out how to do that um, with some new learning still available. Great. Okay. Thank you. Sure. So let's move on to the next stage. So now we're moving into stages four and five, and this is more of your moderate dementia. And so this person is going to go from a little bit more of that complex engagement, those multi-step activities, to something that resembles a little bit more like housekeeping or work tasks. So we're starting to tap into that procedural memory a little bit more. If you give them a broom, will they know what to do without you telling them? I Usually, yes. So we're tapping into that procedural memory. So you might want to think about who makes the bed in your home. 
do you always make your bed now for your mom? Maybe she would enjoy making it each morning. Who assists in handing out, now this is an example of a small in-home assisted living, who enjoys handing out the activity flyers? Or who helps prepare the snacks or sets the tables for the meals? And so you might wanna think about that idea of being on a cruise ship. It's okay for a little while, but in the end, we really like to be a part of our environment and those meaningful activities. And a lot of our meaningful activities do stem around the care of our home, as well as around meals. And getting your loved one to be an active participant in that is a huge component of something they can successfully do. Now, it also might be coming up with something for, uh, maybe it's your father that's living with you and maybe he was the fixer in the home. Maybe there still is something that needs a little tightening and he can still use a screwdriver. Um, or maybe he has a toolbox that he carries around and takes a look at something for you. Um, so always kind of go back to what they used to do and what they used to enjoy and see how we can modify it so it could be a little simpler and a successful activity. Now this, um, this stage is also going to enjoy those outings, even if it's a car ride, you know, driving around, looking at the lights. Um, something to think about. Don't be too afraid of, of having to keep them right there in the home. Another few suggestions here is exercise. This person will still enjoy exercise. Whether it's stretching, they might need a little bit more of a one-on-one -on -one cheerleader, throwing that DVD in there of an exercise video or putting it on YouTube. They might not be able to follow that video instruction they might need someone there with them, but it is still really important that we do exercise. Music is another one. I don't know about you, but if you're listening to the holiday music, it just puts you in a better spirit. You tend to dance, you tend to maybe sing while you're cooking. It's a dual task activity. You're actually engaging in something while you're thinking and you're singing. Um, so be cognizant of throwing in some music in there into some music that maybe they really liked. You certainly don't put on the holiday music if that's not something that they enjoyed. Um, and it might depend too on who's in the home with you. Again, if you have kids in your home, you all might enjoy singing holiday music versus what you might play if they're by themselves. Um, reminiscent boxes are great as well. You might wanna put in some favorite items into a box. And if you, you know, as you as a caretaker need to go and brush your teeth or do your own self care, you could always pull out that box and hand it to them and have them take a look at it while you're getting some alone time and self care time yourself and they're engaging in a meaningful activity. Trivia games is another one. They might be able to recall things from long, long ago to engage in a trivia type game probably don't want to ask too much about recent questions, but we can tap into that long term memory. Another one is a ball activity. And so it just really simplifies an activity of gross motor coordination, they can be sitting, they can be standing. Um, kickball is another one, or a family favorite is hot potato. So it's really something that's tapping into that cognition motor planning, reactive piece that's gonna keep us engaging and moving throughout our home. That's great. And we hear so much about music. I'm glad you mentioned music again. I know that we hear so much about it in terms of calming down um, a patient who may be agitated mm -hmm. um, or confused or anxious. Absolutely. The world around us, the environment can be so overstimulating. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if we're able to just pause and put on music that they enjoyed, it takes them back to those memories and it gives them something in a way concrete as much as you can't see it or feel it. It's kind of overtakes the senses, that music, and, and it is a very calming activity. Now, if you if you put it on your speaker, right, on your Alexa, and you're blaring it through the house and you're dancing, <laughs> that's going to be a totally different experience than maybe playing Frank Sinatra, right, while sitting right. in a recliner, mm -hmm. letting yourself reminisce back to the good times. 
So you could use it to however you see fit. Awesome. So here's a couple more. Um, this is getting more into stages five where we need the activities to be a little bit more simpler. So you might wanna think about a sorting or matching activity. I even do this with my toddler. I don't know about you, but all these examples of spending a lot of time at home is matching socks. Mm -hmm. Who ends up with a big bin of socks and I save it to the last when I'm folding my laundry. That could even be something that your loved one could help with is ma matching the socks, putting the utensils away in the drawer when the dishwasher's done or when the dishes are done. It's, you know, there's really only four choices and they can put the utensils away for you. Um, it might be a simple craft activity or if they were a gardener doing something indoors, a container gardening. There's something too about putting your hands in the soil and you know, remembering to water it every week, you might have to remind them, but you know, that, that activity of taking care of something is so important. We might look to large piece puzzles. They might've loved puzzles when they were younger, but maybe those smaller pieces are a little bit too challenging. So we might need to upgrade to a larger piece puzzle. Um, sometimes a baby doll is used. I'd say that's probably more as we get further into the stages of dementia. But if you have a mom that's with you that had children and was a caretaker or perhaps a babysitter or cared for the little ones in the family, you know, a baby doll might be something calming to her. And storytelling. If your loved one is going there with a story, go there with them. You don't always need to orient them back to the environment and the time right now. It's fun to listen to these stories and, and go back in time with them. It elicits a lot of good memories. So here's some specific for women. We talked a little bit about the baby doll, so that could go on either side. Could also be folding laundry, arranging dishes in the cabinet. Now you'll have to think about their physical abilities too. Um, if they're having trouble holding on to things, you might not want to give them that heavy china plate to put up in the cabinet, but maybe they could handle the cups that are a little bit lower. So you kind of want to think about those abilities and where things are. Dusting is a very good, good one too. You give them a duster or a Swiffer, they tend to know what to do with it and they can walk around and help you with things. Making gifts during this holiday time, you could have them help stuff the envelopes. You can write a card and they can put it in there and seal it for you. They could put the stamps on the envelope. Um, they might even help making some bracelets if you have grandchildren, you know, get out the beads and the string and have grandma make something for them. And decorating, don't take away the decorating from them. Figure out a way that they can help um, engage in that, whether it's helping to decorate the Christmas tree or putting garland up. Um, you might, it might not be perfect, um, but again, think about your kids and how they love to engage. It's not always the outcome that you're looking for. It's really doing and being a part of it that's important. Um, and then some simple food related activities. Maybe doing afternoon tea. Cookie making is a big one too in my family. This is the season for that. So kind of planning those activities into your week or weekend. Um, not every day and not overstimulating the day, but kind of spacing them out through the week and, and giving them something to look forward to. So here's some suggestions for men. Um, and again, this could go either way, but just some things to get you thinking is a Velcro dart tournament. This is also something I've recently picked up. They have them at the dollar store and you, you hang them up on your wall or wherever you want. And they're little like ping pong balls with Velcro around them. And that's a fun family competition. Um, a lot of Nerf guns that are around too, that you could have some fun with, as well as a putting green, um, you know, like a miniature golf set in your home. So when I was working with a patient, um, I might have told the story in one of the other parts, but his wife was having a very difficult time with managing her self-care. And so we were able to find a few activities that her husband really enjoyed engaging in. One of them was listening to Frank Sinatra. One was table air hockey, which he loved. He was so competitive. And a third was this putting green. Um, he would do it sitting and he had a golf club and he would just 
He would just go to town and he would keep himself busy and engage in activity so she could get something else done. Um, so just something to think about. Now, if you're there and, and you're going into conversation, think about what they liked, you know, years ago, what would they talk about? Again, they might not remember who just won the football game, but they could probably tell you some stories about sports and sports games, as well as maybe um, movies, Star Wars or antique cars, if that's what they were interested in. Go there with them in those conversations. They'll still love social activities. So maybe playing poker, but playing it for pennies, right? Um, Tailgate parties, probably not so much anymore, but you know this person is still going to enjoy those social activities. They may also still really like to have a collection of things. Um, and so if they did, if they have that at their older home or in a box, you might wanna pull those out this holiday season and take a look at those cars that they were collecting um, or even point them in that direction to take a look at it, to give them um, some engagement for a few minutes. All right, so we're gonna move on to the later stages. Now here, really, this is where we're getting back to almost comparing what they can do to that of a toddler and even an infant, um, kind of following that theory of neuroretrogenesis, that doing is the goal. If you were to give a three-year-old, a four-year-old a project, you wouldn't expect them to color in the lines, right? but you would be very happy that they held the marker or the crayon and they were engaging in an activity so you could have some quiet time and they're enjoying the activity as well. So the doing is the goal. They're probably going to need slower pace activities, simple activities, one to two steps. Um, and they might need to do these activities with some repetition. You wanna be aware of just any visual deficits that they have, make sure there's proper lighting um, maybe a, a table lamp if they're, you're giving them something on the table to do. And you're going to want to position the activity right around midline for them. Um, you don't want to put something way off on the side. Again, your loved one is progressing through that dementia lives kind of in this world of a binocular eyes. And they're not going to see what's too far in front of them. They might miss what's on the floor or on their sides. And so coming kind of right at their midline is important. A group activity is going to be more challenging for this person. They're not going to be able to follow along with what's being asked of them, or they might not even be able to mimic back what you're showing them. And so really tapping into that procedural memory is very important. They're not going to be able to follow those cues quite so much. Power of music, music is retained as we go through stages of dementia. So music is very, very powerful. That's probably what you're seeing a little bit more. There's that YouTube um, or video clip kind of going around I've seen on Facebook and on LinkedIn. That is a person with this progressed stage of dementia. They're also going to enjoy sensory stimulation. So you might wanna pull out that cinnamon or the nutmeg, right? Um, that, and you can go there with them in almost a reminiscing activity. Textures as well might be something good. I actually, I don't have it in front of me, but I just picked up a ball that has kind of those, the spikes on them. Um, and even just giving my little one that to kind of play with um, is a nice sensory experience. And so they even make kind of uh, water mats too, or you can move marbles through the water mat. You can put those on the table. Those are sort of sensory experiences that can keep their attention. Push pulling activities as well. Um, so maybe it's, you know, put it, giving them a cloth on a table and you have them wipe the table for you. Again, it's not gonna be perfect, but it's the doing that is the goal. Um, it might be building blocks, um, something kind of simple. Um, you can even get an adult set that's more like a wooden block set than the child like that's plastic. So there's definitely some things you can do as well as picking activities. So I've also seen some of my patients um, that I work with, they'll put raisins in bread dough or they might put beads in Play-Doh. There's, there's different things that we can do depending upon um, that sensory experience that the person is kind of seeking. Here's where we talk about the baby doll a little bit more. You'll see this, if they were uh, a caretaker, they might 
um, really just enjoy going back to that role of, of being that motherly figure or caretaker. And so a baby doll sometimes is very soothing. Sorting activities. So we might even start to give them different colored sugar packets and ask them to sort those things. Maybe we give them socks, but only five pairs. So we're making it a little bit simpler for them. Sometimes working with warm things such as warm dough, especially now with your holiday baking, that might be something that is enjoyable for your loved one. We talked a little bit already about wiping the table. Music, so just teasing this out a little bit more, it could be the singing to the music or just giving them headphones and letting them listen to the music. You might even wanna start dancing with them. You might see some more movement with music than you would typically without it. And so if you're really looking for that physical engagement, pairing that with music can sometimes automatically elicit that response to the beat. Um, and gardening, you know, if you can get outside, I think it's snowing as we speak where I am. So today is probably not that day, but as we do get into warmer weather, you know, going outside into a controlled environment, such as the backyard, a deck, a patio, to enjoy nature, um, and maybe see the fruits of their labor in that, in that plant that's now growing that you planted indoors is, is a very successful experience. Um, and a balloon tap activity, you know, I do keep this on here because even my little one loves a balloon tap, right? Don't let it hit the floor. Um, mm -hmm. Don't let it pop. And you can get the whole family involved or just you. And you can be sitting, you can be standing. Um, and it's a very easy but fun activity to do with someone in this stage. So here's just a few more for you. Um, looking through pictures and picture books, reminiscing with someone is so powerful. This was something that I actually set up for another patient of mine um, that in the afternoon when she would start to elicit negative behaviors and some uh, behavioral outbursts, what we actually found was engaging her and looking through her picture book um, actually calmed her down and it made her happy. And she had someone sitting there with her eye contact, going through the book. Um, and, you know, she didn't speak a whole lot, but it made such a difference in her daily routine and her life and the caregivers of just simply looking through a photo album that her family put together. So now um, with the sensory experiences, we talked a little bit about the dough. We talked about some different kinds of balls, the sensory mat, um, but you can even do something with a visual experience. Now with the lights, you can put even lights around in the inside of your home. Maybe it's colored, maybe it's white, maybe it's twinkle, just kind of knowing what your loved one might enjoy or what they've always had in their home. Even something like a lava lamp that has that light kind of going up and coming down can be a calming um, visual effect that you can throw in. And then we talked about the spices, but aromas. You might even throw in some colognes or perfume lavender, spearmint, um, and really have that interaction with someone to see what you get. You know, what you get one day might not be the reaction you get the next, which can be challenging. Um, and if you do elicit a negative response, just be cognizant of that. So the next time you go to do a similar um, activity with them, you know how to best equip and set those expectations. And maybe you stay away from that knowing that they'll be successful using something a little bit different. So just to wrap up here, really rapport building is so important. Um, usually loved ones with dementia love consistency. They love a schedule. They love things being in a routine, but you might find that you do need to vary what you're doing depending upon their reaction. And as they do move through the stages of dementia, you're also going to need to be that detective to figure out what works and to adjust your, your approach. So you might need to trial some activities. You might need to trial the lighting, trial the sound around. Maybe you don't pull out a certain activity if you have a lot of family around because that will just be too overwhelming for them. Really think about the past roles and interests of your loved one and start there when you're thinking about the activities to integrate. And go with the flow, stay flexible, 
really think about the doing is the important part. Relaxing those rules, it doesn't have to be perfect, but doing is the goal. Excellent, excellent. Uh, well, we'll continue. I have a question, but I do realize you have a case study. Do we, are we doing that or no? Well, I wasn't sure about time. So if you have questions yeah. or there are questions, let's, let's look see. at that. I do. Know, okay. So um, audience members, if you do have a question, go ahead and put it in the chat box or the Q&A, whichever is easier for you. If you're listening to us on Facebook, Facebook, you can go ahead and put a question in the comment section and Tiffany will let us know. But I did have a, a question that came in from before the call with the registration. And uh, the question is, my father is, um, I'm paraphrasing, of course, but the question was, my father has dementia. He sleeps most of the time now. Uh, we have a caregiver that comes in three times a week but he's very agitated and very, um, he tells my mother, I don't want him here. Why is he here? Um, you know, what to do? They want to know what can we do? Because they really do, the mom needs that caregiver to give her a little bit of a break. So what to do to calm him down, etc. cetera. And um, thoughts. Yeah, so a few. I would start by making sure that that caregiver knows something about, you said it was her father? Yes, yeah. Knows something about her father. Maybe even creating something like, um, you know, what did he do for a living? What was his wife's name? What are his children's name? What were his interests or leisure activities? Mm -hmm. What kind of car did he drive? Um, did he like his car? Some, some men really like their, their cars and some don't really care less. So you might not want to go there. So you almost want to go back to what we talked about in the first part of the series is communication and building rapport. Again, I, that loved one doesn't need to know anything about me, but I need to know about them. They might not remember his name, but your dad will remember how that caregiver made him feel. So mm -hmm. those are all the things, right? That caregiver might come in and say, well, I, I want you to do something for me because that would be successful, right? But here her dad's like, what are, I don't want to do anything for you. Who are you? You should do something for him. Mm -hmm. So you might just need to go back to the drawing board of does that caregiver go above and beyond to establish rapport and don't expect you know, you want to be careful with your language. You don't want to go to him to say, do you remember what we did yesterday? Or do you remember my name? Um, because all of that is not important, engaging in the moment. Um, and so if you have an idea of what his favorite activities were, go there. Um, that's where I would start. Mm -hmm. Or even, you know, let's get up and get dressed today. You have great outfits. Look at this picture, how well you were dressed. You know, let, let's get dressed and, and look fly today or, you know, whatever that terminology might be to get them excited um, right. Right. to get up with you. Great advice. I think that's wonderful advice. All right. What other questions might you have, audience members? This has really been such a helpful, helpful series. I'm wondering, though, as we wait for any additional questions, I'm wondering how if people don't know what stage their loved one is in, what the best way is to figure that out? Sure. So it's usually gauged by the activities that they can do and what they start to have trouble with. So any um, provider can stage your loved one, whether it's a neurologist, um, a primary care provider, a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, a speech language pathologist. So that's certainly something um, that any of, of us as providers can assist with and then help gear any actions towards those successful activities. Great, okay. So that's good to know because so many times we assume that they know. And I know that we discussed this, I think in, in the first um, mm -hmm. 
the first coffee chat of this series, but I just wanted to repeat that because we have new viewers and they may not know. I find that there's a lot of um, confusion and mystery. They don't know where to turn or who to talk to. Uh, so that's very good advice. It sounds like any of your professional practitioners can stage your loved one. I like how you put yeah. that. Now, Mary Ellen, I see someone has a hand raised. Ah, okay. But I'm, I'm not, not the sure. host. So I need uh, Tiffany, if you could help us out with that, if someone has a, uh, their hand raised. Oh, I'm the co-host now. Okay. So we're just learning this whole Zoom thing. So please bear with us. And I'm not seeing... You know what, um, Dana, do you know who it is? And then we can allow them to talk. Can you see the name? I think it went away. It popped up on my screen and now I don't. Well, we can just, we can keep going. Okay. Um, if you have a question, you don't wanna type it in. Yes, you can raise your hand. You just have to bear with us while we um, open up the line for you to talk. Yes, absolutely. I'll pay a little bit more attention to if there's a name that popped up. <laughs> All right, and Tiffany, are we seeing any uh, questions or comments on Facebook? No, there's no questions or comments on Facebook yet. Okay, great. So any other uh, comments that you might want to add since it is the holidays, this can be a stressful time. We're in the middle of a pandemic. I know that many families will not be celebrating the way that they are used to with all of their relatives or larger gatherings. Is there any advice you want to share for keeping your loved ones um, I hate to say stress-free, but stress-free, a little less anxious as we get through the holiday uh, holiday period. Absolutely. So along the lines of what we've talked about so far, as you're planning your day, see what components your loved one or your family can support you in. Um, you know, maybe it is gathering items out of the refrigerator, or maybe it's putting all of those ingredients, or you put them in the bowl, you gather them and they help to stir. Yeah. Um, really engaging in any of these activities, whether it's pieces of it or from start to finish is a rewarding experience. Um, and so as you're planning those out, figure out those ways to incorporate your loved ones into your holiday activities. And if you don't have any plans, but maybe you always did growing up, it might be something to think outside the box and, and do one of those activities this year. Terrific. Ada, can you hear me? Okay, so now we have Caroline. Yes, yes. Caroline, yes. I just allowed you to speak. We see your hand now. Go ahead. Okay, I may have something to add. I have a sister-in-law who owns a company called Montessori and such. It is on Amazon, and she is very familiar with Alzheimer's. There are a gazillion things there for people with Alzheimer's, uh, sorting, uh, sensory things that include uh, smelling and touch and feeling. It is a gold mine if you're looking for things to use with people with Alzheimer's. It's Montessori and such. Yeah, thank you, Caroline. I will also say that there um, is a wealth of resources on the Alzheimer's Association's website. Uh, that is a great place to go and navigate through and find different resources, just like Caroline had suggested. So thank you for that. And I have a question that says, my mom will say she would like to play a game or do something together, but we'll always have the qualifier of just not right now. Yeah, I'd like to do that, just not right now. Hmm. I wonder what she then goes to do instead. I don't know if you can put that in the chat. I'm just curious. Uh, okay, yes. Yeah. So if you could let us know. So what does she do instead? Does she, is she just watching TV or is she? Yeah, 
Good mm -hmm. question. Good um, it might be one of those things where she almost needs to get out of her own way. Um, and so you might need to get that activity, put it in front of her, and you might say, Mom, I know you have a lot on your mind, but let's have some fun right now. We'll do that afterwards. Um, again, kind of validate what she's going through, what she's saying, and then try to redirect her to that task. You might not um, at first want to expect that her attention will stay on too long. I, myself playing Monopoly, I can't get through that game from start to finish. I can't take long that. That's a lot that long. Yeah. Um, I think they made a Monopoly deal or a shorter version, and I love that myself. Mm -hmm. So you might want to think about what you're putting in front of her, you know, again, don't expect that she'll finish the game, um, but maybe validating direct her to that. So she does have a few moments of enjoyment there and then maybe say, okay, let's go finish what, what you need to do. Great. All right. Now we, this is, well, they're all serious, but this is um, adds a whole nother dimension. So the question is, my mother says she no longer wants to live and wants to commit suicide. What can I say to her? That is a hard, that's a hard one. That's a very, um, it's a very hard situation. My, my heart goes out to you. Certainly validating any type of statement is important, especially this one. Um, she's feeling something to say that. I would certainly let her provider know as soon as possible as well, whether it's a primary care or a neurologist, but I would certainly let them know that this is what she's verbalizing. Um, maybe there's something going on with her, her medication that they yeah. could even look at. Um, but it might also be, again, just validating and then distracting. So if you can validate her feelings, mom, tell me about that. You must be having a hard morning let's have a cup of tea and you have a, a, maybe she likes tea or coffee, right? Then you get her redirected to a positive activity. Well, maybe, you know, right after that, you're calling the physician um, to see if there's anything that could be done to help her. That is great advice. You know, it's, it's tough though. I don't want uh, or the adult child, in this case, the daughter, to, um, it, it's hard, like, she may not be at a place where she can stop and have a cup of tea with her mom. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're in between a rock and a hard place sometimes. And I just want to mention that if you are the caregiver of a loved one with dementia, that we salute you. We know how hard it is. We give these suggestions knowing full well that some of them may not be in your wheelhouse. You Absolutely. may be having to go to work every day or you may have a, you know, your own children that you have to take care of. So looking for some outside resources can be very helpful as well. And uh, just to piggyback on that, also, we do know, Dana, and, and you can speak to this, that um, depression is also very common for obvious reasons with people with dementia, and there are medications for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, each medication also brings about various side effects that your loved one might be experiencing. And depending upon the changes of their brain, you know, maybe there is a medical diagnosis such as Alzheimer's that's going on that's affecting that individual part of their brain or vascular dementia. And that one portion happens to be most affected. So that's where your provider can give you some more insight um, as well as perhaps a neurologist that could help point you in the right direction. Terrific. All right, any final questions before we call it a year? We're actually not calling it a day, we're calling it a year. This is our last coffee chat for 2020. I, I have to say, we are going to be saying adios to 2020 at the tip of our foot, right? Just kick it on out of here. Uh, but we will be continuing in January. Our next one will be January 13th. And we will be talking about top 10 things you need to know when your loved one is diagnosed with dementia or Alzheimer's, dementia slash Alzheimer's or other dementias. 
And then on the 26th, I will have Sheila Griffith back from the Alzheimer's Association uh, with a great New Year's plan for what you can do with your loved ones. So, wow, this has been a great series. Dana, I can't thank you enough. You- It's been a pleasure. Yes. And for all of our uh, guests, like I said, you will receive the recorded link if you have loved ones you want to share it with, or if you just want to re-listen, absolutely. Let us know uh, what you thought of it. And by all means, if you ever want it in all of your emails, there's a little link to give us a review. If you ever feel so inclined, we definitely appreciate it. All right, Dana, happy holidays to you. Thank you yes. so very much. Happy holidays, everyone. I hope I was able to give you some important resources to keep in mind as we go through these holidays. And if you need any more insight, don't hesitate to find us at foxrehab.org. Love it. Thank you, Dana. Take care, everyone. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.